How's everybody doing out there in RV world? So Scott and Renee back with another episode. Now, today's gonna be a first for us. We are making this video out of a situation that we had that we see online that we've never had a problem with. So we're gonna talk about this. No, not flannel shirts, but the missing pieces of flannel shirts that we had in our RV and our hamper specifically. Now, if you don't remember, we put our hamper as an Ikea bag mm -hmm. down in the nose of the RV, kind of down in the cubby. So there's only one thing that can do this to a shirt. And we're going to show you what we're doing to prevent this from happening again and how we found the little thing that did this. Stay tuned. <laughs> As you know, on a Grand Design reflection, in most Grand Designs, the underbelly is sealed. And they do a lot of preventative maintenance to make sure that it stays sealed with the foam, the spray foam, and the, uh, the way they screw the underbelly on. And it's actually sealed real tight. But what we found is really entrance points for critters and things, creepy crawly things. Things we don't want to mention. Things we don't want to mention. <laughs> do, do, do. Yeah. So. That's time to burn the RV down. Yeah, time to, <laughs> yeah, as soon as Renee sees a snake, everything catches on fire. We found some other entrance points that we're going to show you and kind of little quick fixes and then some permanent fixes for some other things. So let's take you to the first two entry points that are uh, most common for rodent entry, I guess, right? All right, so here's number one. This is the nose of the RV, and we come into the, um, the storage here. And as you can see, the hoses come through this super awesome hole here. Now you can see it's got the little flaps to really kind of keep it closed, but something can definitely crawl right up these hoses and come right through here. And in all honesty, I leave this open, this flap open, because I can't put the two hoses to close it. So what Renee and her aunt did, they got these scrubbies. And if you can find um, like SOS pads or these scrubby balls, rodents hate it when they come into this. So, you know, you can put cotton in there, but obviously rodents can uh, chew and dig through cotton. Yeah, you're just adding to the nest. So that right there works wonders. So we did it to the other side as well. And there's no hoses going in on the, on the other side. So we did that. But what happens is since they get in here, now they have free reign of everything else. So I'm hoping you all can see this. Inside here, there is a hole that all the wires or the wires, the, um, the water hoses come from the bottom into. Now this hole is got to be, see if I can get in here for you guys. That's gonna be hard with the GoPro. But there's a hole down there that's gotta be at least four inches wide. And that is super, super easy for a mouse to crawl in and out of the underbelly, make a nest, be warm, and come in and out as they please. So unfortunately, I really can't just spray foam that area right there because there's so many wires and hoses that need to be readily accessible. So we can prevent them from coming into the cubby area and hopefully stop them from going into there. So one thing to note that Renee just said is the mouse, we had a sticky pad up here the other day and the mouse was caught in this area. And if you have any suggestions, on how to fix that issue, please leave a comment down below and uh, let us know how we can do that. So now we are inside the closet where the drawers go. And what I'm looking at here is a hole with all this plumbing that goes from, or it comes from the underbelly to route all the uh, water hoses, but also some of those red and blue lines go 
out of the underbelly because it's I won't be able to get it with the GoPro. You can see some light to the actual outside of the underbelly. So that will be an easy fix just to um, just to put some spray foam on it. But other than that, sorry, it's kind of hard when it's dark in here. But we're thinking about spray foaming this whole area, this whole square, and um, seeing if we can uh, seal that up. We are in debate if we should spray foam the whole thing because then if something happens and we need to get to these for the RV repair person, that's going to be a big uh, chunk of extra work to get rid of all the spray foam that we have put there. So what we did is we have a uh, rat trap here. We put it down right here. And uh, I'm kind of glad the rat or mouse didn't come this way because all my shirts. All right, so these hoses, we're still inside the, um, inside the drawers here. So these hoses go into the bathroom to feed the bathroom sink. So of course, that's where we store our TP and stuff. And you know, we don't want that thing to eat our TP. We just kind of put Gorilla Tape on that one. That'll be easy. And I'm trying to think if I could do Gorilla Tape down here, but That'll be a lot of tape and a lot of nastiness, so we'll work it out. This is the cold water that goes to the floor or to the underbelly from the um, from the water supply to flush the toilet. So, so you can see we just put some uh, Gorilla Tape, just eliminate any other little entrances. So the next spot we're going to is the, um, hutch. it's the hutch, I guess, is what you want to call it. But um, we call it the coffee bar and the collector bar. See that? Stay tuned, video to come on that new thing. We're gonna remove this and we're gonna show you some holes that go, that access the underbelly and uh, show you what we do there. So as you can see, we remove the wires and then you come into a spaghetti junction of cables coming from the uh, breaker box and everything. Definitely don't mess with those. As you can see, there's a pipe here probably better without the light sorry there's some gap there that we're gonna be uh, filling up but this is the other gap by the way if this gets really hot in here obviously this is the heater get yourself some um, aluminum foil tape and start taping around these joints here because there's a lot of heat that escapes out of here and it'll heat this whole area up and that's your power inverter you don't want to get that really hot Obviously it's next to heater hoses and cables, but you'll be, it's less, less entry of heat. So things like this, you wanna seal up. Side note for you. There is definitely a huge hole here that goes down into the underbelly. And we're definitely stuck on how to seal this all up and what to do. So we're really not sure. It's a lot of uh, a lot of gappage, I guess if that's a word. So hopefully you can see even back there, it all is open. So we're really at a loss. Do we just spray foam everything? Um, I don't know. Help us out, guys. What do we? What do you think? Put it down in the comments below. Do we spray foam this? Do we tape it, or do we just do preventative stuff to keep critters from coming in from the outside and just leave this open? So we are going to move from under the hutch to under the sink. Oh, look at that cup, by the way. Brand design. Ooh. So you can see we have our P-trap. Lily's food, our cleaning supplies. So there's this protector piece of wood that protects the plumbing. And uh, we unscrewed that. You just move that out of the way. And now you have this opening. Obviously this little hole back here goes to the, uh, just into the RV. But then there's the hole that goes down here. Again, another entrance point for a possible critter. This one we're definitely gonna be spray foaming. I know we only have a couple of uh, electrical wires that go to the uh, outlets that are on the, on the island. This one we will be spray foaming. 
We are underneath the RV and uh, we're gonna see how we are going to remove all these screws. So this, I got one, two, I don't think there's anything under here. This is a, um, a signal repeater for the TPMS system. So we are going all the way across over there. Yeah, so right here, mind you, I'm laying down looking up underneath the RV. So sorry about the orientation. I feel like there's a gap here. So we'll address that as soon as we uh, take off the underbelly. So as you can see here, not really anything. We got some debris, but I don't think that's rat debris. It's spray foam. But you can see we got the hose for heated underbelly. We have water hoses running through there. And then way up front, up in that area there to be exact is where it all goes behind this support pillar and I think that's a tank that's either a black or a gray tank I'm not sure so we're gonna keep moving along and figure out what we're gonna do So we are under the side here where the steps are and I'm going to see if I can get this again guys but the good news is this is super clean in here I mean there is nothing here the only thing that we see is the uh, debris from the foam when they installed okay so this is a good sight to see nice and clean and we got the fresh water tank over there and I think this is the gray tank and I think the black tank I'm sorry I think this is the black tank and the other gray tank is uh, over there so good news no rat stuff or rat nests so we could close this up with confidence um, we did not Again, we did not take off the whole underbelly because it is one sheet and that's a lot to do in the driveway and moving a lot of stuff around without screwing anything else up. You know, that's how us guys do stuff. All right, welcome back to another uh, episode of Scott Hangs Out Under the Nice Cool RV. You can see here, we dropped our tire and there is a pretty good slice in here for the uh, the cable to drop down. And um, thank you. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is put a fix of it of uh, with uh, Gorilla Tape. So all it needs is really a small hole just for the cable to drop down. Actually underneath you can see this is the actual uh, the winch. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of uh, corners off here. And that should be it. And then I'm just gonna tape everything up. I'm just gonna clean this area up where I'm gonna tape. Just get rid of a lot of the dust. And if you buy Gorilla Tape, buy the three inch stuff if you have an RV. That way you have long strips and then you could just cut it down the center if you need to. The three inch tape works amazing. So I'm just gonna do a couple of uh, Tacks there, go inside. Just 
So basically right now I'm just putting them over the, um, the slits. So this is what I mean. See, now you have your regular, you would spend money to go buy this size, but now you have double, double the capacity. What I'm gonna do is take a little bit, tear it that way, and that's gonna go around the uh, cable. So now it's pretty much sealed up. This is now sealed up. And there ain't no critters gonna be going in there. And this cable can still go up and down. You can see how tight I got it around the cable. So I'm very excited about that. So now that you've seen all our entry points and some of the things that we've closed up, we're gonna make this a two part video. The first part, obviously showing you all the possible entry points, whether it be below the, hit, the hutch, underneath the sink, we need your feedback. How should we close these up? Should we even close them up? Should we just leave them alone and really focus on closing up the external entrances and stop them from even possibly coming in. Give us your feedback, leave comments down below if you will, let us know what you've done or if you have any suggestions. So we just spray foam the heck out of every hole, should we not? That's what we got for you today. That's part one of showing you all the entry points. Stay tuned for part two. We're gonna gather up everybody, everybody's uh, comments below and kind of assess that. And part two will be coming soon. Thanks for watching guys.